using commas in adjective clauses. When you're reading, sometimes you will see a sentence like this. Barack Obama, who is President of the United States, has two daughters. And you might ask yourself, why are those commas there? The good news is that there are some rules that you can think about to help you decide when to use commas in your own writing. That's the subject of this video, using commas in adjective clauses. When we're talking about adjective clauses, there are two possibilities. Either the clause uses commas, or it does not use commas. We'll begin with adjective clauses that do not require commas. Here's our first example. The woman who is wearing the red dress is my piano teacher. As you know, the underlined portion of this sentence is our adjective clause, who is wearing the red dress. To explain why we don't use commas in this adjective clause, let's look at what happens if we remove the adjective clause from the sentence. We get, the woman is my piano teacher. When I see or hear this sentence, my first reaction is, what woman? Who? There might be many women in the room. How do I know which one we're talking about? That's the job that this adjective clause does. It helps us to identify which woman we are talking about. In other words, out of all of the women in the room, it tells us exactly which woman is my piano teacher. Because we do not use commas with this adjective clause, we call it a restrictive or essential adjective clause. That is because from all of the women in the room, it restricts our focus to just one. We can also say that it specifies, or identifies, which woman we are talking about. We use the word essential because, as we just saw, the sentence does not make sense without the adjective clause. If you don't know these words, like restrict, specify, identify, or essential, you can stop the video for a moment to look them up. The other possibility is an adjective clause that does require commas. Here's our first example. Chicago, which is located on Lake Michigan, is the third largest city in the U.S. We can see that the adjective clause here is, which is located on Lake Michigan. To explain why we use commas in this adjective clause, let's look at what happens if we remove the adjective clause from the sentence. We get, Chicago is the third largest city in the U.S. That still makes sense and gives us useful information. So unlike our previous example, the sentence does not need this adjective clause in order to work. It just gives us extra information. This idea of extra information is very important. If we don't need the adjective clause in order for the sentence to make sense and give us useful information, then we call it a non-restrictive or non-essential adjective clause. This is because we don't need the clause and it does not specify or identify what we are talking about. We don't ask which Chicago. We already know what or who we are talking about. Here is our second example. I live in Chicago, which is located on Lake Michigan. Here, our adjective clause is, which is located on Lake Michigan. It is extra information, which means that it is non-restrictive or non-essential, which means that we must use commas. But, if a non-restrictive or non-essential adjective clause comes at the end of a sentence, there will only be a comma at the beginning of the adjective clause. There is already a period at the end of the sentence, so we can't put a comma there. You have already learned a number of what are called relative pronouns, which are the words that we use to begin an adjective clause. We will not discuss how to use them here, since that is not the topic of this video. If you have questions about any of them, then you can ask your teacher. Right now, we are interested in which relative pronouns we can use with which kinds of adjective clauses. Stop the video for a moment and read these sentences. All of these sentences use restrictive or essential adjective clauses. For restrictive or essential adjective clauses, we can use all relative pronouns. 
So remember that when you have an adjective clause that does not use commas, all relative pronouns are possible. Stop the video for a moment and read these sentences. All of these sentences use non-restrictive or non-essential adjective clauses. However, unlike our previous examples, there are two relative pronouns that we can't use. They are that and phi in sentences two and three. So remember that when you have an adjective clause that uses commas, you cannot use that or phi to begin the adjective clause. You may have noticed that some of the sentences in the previous examples were very similar. In fact, there are some times when commas in an adjective clause can change the meaning of the sentence. Let's look at a few examples. My brother, who lives in Detroit, is an engineer. My brother who lives in Detroit is an engineer. These two sentences use the exact same words, but the commas tell us some very interesting information. In the first sentence, it seems like I have only one brother. That's because the commas tell us, hey, this is extra information. Because it's extra information, that means there is no need to specify which brother I'm talking about. So logically, I must have only one brother. The second sentence has no commas, so it's identifying which brother I'm talking about. This implies that I have more than one brother. That way, we know that we are talking about my brother who lives in Detroit, and not my brother who lives in Cleveland. Let's look at one more set of examples. Our house, which is located on Vine Street, has a large kitchen. Our house, which is located on Vine Street, has a large kitchen. Again, these two sentences use the exact same words, but tell us slightly different information. Stop the video for a moment and think about what the difference is. When you're ready, push play again to see the answer. The first sentence, which has commas, tells us that the adjective clause is extra information, so we don't have to specify one house out of many houses. There is only one house. So because we have only one house, we use commas. But the second sentence has no commas, which means that we have more than one house. So we have to identify which house we're talking about. So one piece of information that you can take away from this second sentence is that because there are no commas, we're rich. With the examples that we just talked about, you may have noticed that they sound slightly different. It's true. There is a pronunciation difference between adjective clauses with commas and without commas. Listen to the two pairs of sentences and see if you can hear the difference. My brother, who lives in Detroit, is an engineer. My brother who lives in Detroit is an engineer. Our house, which is located on Vine Street, has a large kitchen. Our house, which is located on Vine Street, has a large kitchen. When I read the commas, I pause and my voice rises a bit. Although I'm exaggerating this to make it clear, all native speakers should and do give some short pause here to indicate that there are commas present. We have looked at two different kinds of adjective clauses, those that require commas and those that do not require commas. It can be difficult to remember the words that we use to describe them, like restrictive and non-restrictive, so it may be helpful for you to just remember what rules you must follow to use or not use commas. If you have an adjective clause that restricts, specifies, or identifies something, in other words, if it answers the question which or which one, then you won't use commas. You can use any relative pronoun so long as it is grammatically correct. If you have an adjective clause that just gives extra information about something, then you must use commas. Remember that you cannot use that or phi as your relative pronoun. 
You will find that although these rules appear simple, it will not always be easy to tell whether you need commas or not. But don't worry. With more practice, you will improve. That's all for now. Thanks for your attention.